Hello and welcome to Clearview Television. We are reaching you live from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. This is Abuja, the fastest growing city in the world. Thousands troop in and out of this great place. So, where are you coming from? Far north, south, east, or west? Let's share this wisdom with you about where to stay, considering comfort, prompt services, and above all, adequate security. Zeus Paradise Hotel, number one, Domenico Gicho Street by Setraco, by Jabi Lake Mall, Mabushi, Abuja. We invite you to get details of this hotel from our website, www.zeusparadise.com. Telephone 0807-050-0062. Zeus Paradise Hotel, complete home away from home. South African woman has reportedly given birth to 10 babies in what would be a new world record. Gosiame Tamara Sithoyel's husband says they were astonished by decuplets after scans only showed eight in the womb. Guinness World Records said it was investigating Ms. Sitorel's case, a woman who had eight babies in the U.S. in 2009, currently holds the Guinness World Record for the most children delivered at a single birth to survive. Last month, 25-year-old 25 Halima Sise from Mali gave birth to nine babies who are reportedly doing well at a clinic in Morocco. Multiple births involving more than three babies are rare and often the result of fertility treatments. But in this case, the couple say they conceived naturally. Prayers and sleepless nights, Ms. Sithuel, 37, previously gave birth to twins who are now six-year-olds. She is said to be in good health after delivering by cesarean session 29 weeks into her pregnancy in Pretoria on Monday evening. Speaking to Pretoria News a month ago, Ms. Sithuel said... Her pregnancy was tough at the beginning, and she had prayed for a healthy birth, with many a sleepless nights worrying about what was to come. The Joint Minority Caucus of the Senate and the House of Representatives has met over the ban on Twitter by the All Progressive Congress APC-led administration and has restated its condemnation of the embargo as draconian and unacceptable. This position was contained in a communique signed by Senator Ian Naya Baribe and the Minority Leader of the Senate and Honorable Ndudi Lumelu, the Minority Leader of the House of Representatives. In the statement, the Joint Minority Caucus also dismissed threats by the APC-led government to arrest and prosecute Nigerians using Twitter and calls on Nigerians to go ahead and use the Twitter as they would not be contravening any law in Nigeria or any international statute. The Joint Minority Caucus recognized the provisions of Articles 19 and 20 of the United Nations Charter on Fundamental Human Rights, which Nigeria is a signatory to, as well as provisions of Sections 39 and 36 Subsection 12 of the 1999 Constitution as amended and notes that by these provisions, no one will be violating any law for using Twitter in Nigeria. Human rights lawyer and a senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falona, says the federal government erred in suspending Twitter operations in the country. According to Falona, in a constitutional democracy, the government is not permitted to resort to self-help which implies that rather than place a ban, the government is supposed to have sued Twitter if the organization refuses to respond positively to the concerns of the government. Falona said the federal government should either have sued Twitter in the United States of America or in Ghana, where the microblogging service provider has its African headquarters. The government had said that there has been a litany of problems with Twitter in Nigeria labeling the platform as a place where misinformation and fake news spread. However, the ban on Twitter was only placed after President Buhari's tweet referencing the civil war was deleted. 
poor political leadership characterized by corruption, lack of public trust and internal divisions within political parties are responsible for governance failure in Nigeria. This was the consensus reached by key stakeholders at a national democracy summit organized by the Oyo state government in Ibadan, the state capital. Addressing the summit, Governor Sheyi Makinde insisted that only a return to the practice of true federalism will guarantee the future of Nigeria and its fledging, fledgling democracy. With serious developmental challenges being faced by the country, which most of the challenges have been said to have been due to bad leadership in the country. At the National Democracy Summit in Ibadan, the Ayah State Capital, the Ayah State Governor Sheyi Makinde, queried democracy without the rule of law, noting that for Nigeria federalism to thrive, the federating unit should have more powers and autonomy. We are the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but our federalism exists in name only. Students of political history will tell you that what we have been practicing is, in fact, a unitary system of government. Speaking at the occasion, the Commissioner for Justice of your state, Professor Oyelowo Oyewo, says good democracy must produce balanced and equitable development. Other speakers at the summit note that democracy must deliver the country from the long decades of savagery and oppression. Equating constitutions with constitutionalism was and remains problematic because authoritarian regimes take advantage of that association to hide behind a strategically drafted democracy, democracy embracing constitutional text that appears consistent with constitutionalism but really is only a facade. We should maintain the federal system, I mean the federal system of government in the sense that Nigeria has come to the stage now that we should not allow our leader to come from a local section of the country. The president, I mean the leader of this country should be subject to popular vote. We need to work to make our federal system work better. So far, it is not working better. Uh, it is working better. It's not working better because the cost of governance is so overwhelming that uh, 70 percent of the budget goes into recurrent expenditure. The National Democracy Summit is with the theme, the future of democracy in Nigeria. Ridwan Ogbara, reporting for Clearview Television.